Welcome to Approximation Algorithms and a lecture on summaries for multisets. My name is Rasmus Pei. We'll start the lecture with a motivating example about website statistics. Then we're going to look at two summaries, the Misogree summary and the count mean summary. Let's consider a data set which consists of a log from a browser. We have a bunch of timestamps and corresponding websites that were visited and at those times. One type of question that you might want to ask about these kind of data is what are the most popular websites? You could measure popularity in several different ways, for example, in the number of page views or in the total amount of time spent on a page. Of course, if this is just data coming from one machine or one user, this is quite pretty small data and it's easy to solve. But what if you have a billion users? Then we have a big data problem. The goal that we will discuss in this lecture is how to answer such questions using sublinear space. This improves on the trivial solution where you just use a dictionary to keep track of the mapping between web websites and uh, counts. For big data problems, linear space is just not feasible. The misery Gree summary works in the following setting. We receive a stream of pairs consisting of an item X and a corresponding weight W. Let's call the stream S. It's important to notice that the same item can appear several times in the stream. The weight of an item is defined as the sum over all weights with which this item occurs in the stream. The Misogree summary consists of k pairs, where k is a parameter that you can set. Each x is associated with a weight wx, which is supposed to be an approximation of the true weight. Since we are not able to store all pairs, the weight that we store is not necessarily equal to the true weight of x in S. To distinguish these two, we denote the true weight by wx star. We need to be able to maintain this summary under updates, that is, new elements in the stream. Also, we want the ability to merge two summaries into one of the same size. The merge summary should reflect the multiset union in the sense that the weight of each item should be the sum of the weights in the two summaries. So if the two summaries are S1 and S2, the true weight in the combined summary is simply the sum of the weights in the two summaries separately. Next, let's look at how the Mr. Grease summary handles updates. We consider the case of k equals to 3, and for simplicity, all weights are equal to 1. Suppose the input stream starts with an A. The data structure consists, as we said before, of a, an array of items and corresponding counts. Let's call it T. Since there is space, we simply insert A with a count of 1. Then we see B in the stream, and it also is inserted with a count of 1. When we see A again, we update the counter so that it's equal to 2. When we see C, we insert it with a count of 1. Now comes a new element D. There's now no space in the summary to just put in D, so we need to do something. What we'll do is to say that the smallest counts must go. This is going to give the smallest error or the smallest difference between what is stored and the true counts. We're going to subtract the minimum count, which is one, from all the counts. So these are the revised counts. And now we can uh, evict or kick out all of the elements with zero counts. So we, we do that. We also insert D, and kind of for technical reasons, 
we also subtract m from the count of d, so it ends up with a 1. We go on like this for a little while. It may be that we again have an ele element that where there's no space, and we do the same thing. We subtract the minimum from all the counts, throw out the elements with zero counts, and insert the new one with m subtracted. And it goes on like this. So now the question is, how big an error can we make here? Before we go on and answer that question, let's state the general insertion algorithm based on this example. So of course, if an item X is already in there, we simply increase the counter by W. Otherwise, um, if there is a free slot, that's a slot with a count of zero, then we can simply overwrite that and write the pair X comma W. And finally, if there's no space, we are going to decrease all the counters by M, which is the minimum over all weights in in C, and then we are going to insert the new pair, which consists of x with weight w minus m. Now I want you to pause and think. So we saw a way to insert. What about merging? So suppose we have two mg summaries. How do we merge them into one of the same size? Let's analyze the error made by Mr. Gries. The first observation we can make is that it's always going to be the case that the weight we record is less than or equal to the true weight. Why is that? Well, every time we increase the weight that we store, we see uh, an occurrence of the element with that weight in the stream. So we can never have a weight that is increased without actually having a corresponding element in the stream. Second, we claim that the stored weight cannot be too much smaller than the true weight. The difference is the L1 norm of the true weight vector divided by k plus 1, where the L1 norm is defined as the sum of absolute values of, of the entries. Here we are going to assume that all the entries are non-negative, so the absolute value doesn't really do anything, uh, but that's the general definition. How do we argue for the lower bound on Wx? Let's consider the sum of all weights that we actually store in the sketch. So that is the sum of Wx for all elements x and t. Now we have a stronger claim, namely that Wx is going to be at least the true weight of x divided by the L1 norm minus m divided by k plus 1. So here the L1 norm minus m can be thought of as the total weight of the discarded elements that are not present in the, in the sketch. So what happens when we update? And here we are going to focus on the, on the case where there's no space in the, in the sketch and we need to insert a new element x comma w, that is where x is not in t. Let's denote the new value of m by m prime. So we are going to subtract uh, the minimum m from k plus one, uh, one values, the k ones in the sketch and the new element. And we're going to add the weight w. The new weight that is going to be stored is the old weight minus m. And the induction hypothesis tells us that this is at least equal to the the old weight vector minus the old m divided by k minus 1, which again by definition is equal to what we want, namely the weight of the new weight, uh, weight vector minus the new uh, value of m divided by k plus 1. Of course, we also need to consider the case where the element x actually is in the Summary, uh, but in this case, it's really easy to see by induction that, that the claim holds. For merge, we, 
can also make an argument that all the weights are close to the, to the true weight, and I refer to the book for that. Let's try to plug in some concrete numbers. Suppose that we are storing information about 10 billion website visits, that's 10 to the 10 websites, and we have just a laptop. So we have capacity to store, let's say, 10 million uh, URLs and corresponding counts, 10, 10 million pairs. So K is 10 million, and the number of visits is 10 to the 10, so then the error in the number of visits recorded is at most 1000. In practice, one can often get a much better error by some variants that I'm going to discuss next. So there's a bunch of variants of misregrees. One variant is to keep track of the highest weight you have seen for each item, x. So you do subtract from the, from the weight, but you also keep track of the highest weight. This is a heuristic to decrease the error in typical cases where entries with high weights stay in the sketch for a long time. You can also to keep track of the L1 norm of the true vector count to support upper bounds on the, the true weights using the formula that the true weight is at most, the stored weight plus the L1 norm minus m over k plus 1. So in this way we are going to have both lower and upper bounds explicitly stored. Finally, it's possible to give some support for negative updates by simply thinking of negative and positive updates as affecting several separate variables. So instead of thinking as a true count as, as one variable, we think about it as a difference between two non-negative variables. And we put both of these values into the sketch and uh, estimate the true count of negative updates and the true sum of positive updates. The so-called space-saving algorithm is a variant of misregrees that was independently discovered that keeps track of upper bounds rather than lower bounds. It's discussed in section 3.3 in the book where they also argue that it's actually equivalent to misregrees in the sense that one can be translated to the other. Now let's go to something related, but using very different techniques. So in school, you probably learned about histograms. So histograms record a number for each item in some set. So it's closely related to what we're looking at here. So a histogram could look something like this for, for website visits. So you have like a column for each uh, number that you care about, and you put them next to each other. Clearly the space for storing such a histogram depends on the number of distinct things you want to count, so the number of distinct items. And obviously this can be pretty large in the case of websites and so on. But what we can do, and which is actually often done, uh, just to reduce the space for such a histogram, is to lump things together. So here you could lump search engines together, social media, education, and so on, and you, you're going to get a much smaller histogram that gives you at least some information um, that's relevant. But the question is how to choose the categories. What we're going to discuss next is, can be seen as a randomized ways of choosing the, ca the categories. So instead of kind of semantic categories, as in the example, we're going to use hashing to categorize or put um, counts in different uh, of these uh, columns. So this means, of course, that uh, any semantic meaning is broken. So google.com might end up in a different column than bing.com. Uh, but we can ask what kind of approximation can we get using these kinds of randomized histograms. So let's discuss one particular way of implementing randomized histograms known as the count min sketch. And you should note that the notation that we're going to use here on the slides is a bit different from, from the book. The book also has concrete hash functions uh, that, that they suggest, but here we're just using general abstract hash functions. So the data structure looks very much like a split bloom filter. We have d arrays of some size t each. Let's call them c1 through cd. An update with x comma w evaluates d hash functions indexing each of the d arrays and the update simply takes each of these array entries and adds the weight w to each of them. 
So that is for i equals 1, 2, 3 up to d, we increase ci of hi of x by w. The weight update does not actually need to be greater than or equal to zero. It's perfectly possible to do negative updates, which correspond to decreasing our weight. A query proceeds pretty much the same way. We evaluate the hash functions, look up the values, and we look at the, the weights that are reported in there. And it's easy to see that what we get is going to be the true sum plus some contribution from other elements. And the elements that we get contributions from are those that have hash collisions with x. Let's call this sum the, the noise sum. What we're going to return is the entry that has the smallest noise. So that's the minimum over all i of ci of hi of x. So this is going to be equal to the true sum plus the minimum of all the noise terms. So that we are allowing negative updates, we are assuming, going to assume that the noise is not negative. Now, before we go on, I want you to think, how can we take two count mean sketches and merge them? Also, can you remove one sketch from the other in the sense that if we know that all the elements that were inserted in one was also inserted in another. Um, can you remove the contribution of the, of the other sketch from the first one? Let's analyze the accuracy of the count min sketch. We are going to assume that all the true weights are non-negative. So that is the L1 norm is actually equal to the sum of the true weights. So this assumption is needed for the simple estimator, but it's not needed in general. It is possible, as we will discuss later, to have an estimator even without this assumption. Now we define wx hat to be the estimator of, of the true weight, and we want to bound the difference between wx hat and the wx star, the true weight. And as we argued earlier, one is equal to the other plus all of these noise term terms. And since all the noise terms are non-negative, this is clearly always going to be an overestimate by our assumption. Let's uh, bound the expected error in table number i. So the expected value of, or the expected sum of all y um, that collide with x is uh, going to be a weighted sum where we weigh each wy, wy star by the probability of a hash collision, which is exactly 1 over t if we assume random hashing. So all in all, we get something that is bounded by the L1 norm divided by t. Now, Markov's inequalities say that it's not too likely that we are far above expectation, in particular, the probability that we are t above two times the expectation is at most one half. Note that this means that with probability at least one half, we get an error that is similar to that of Mr. Grease with k equals to t. That is roughly the same space usage. But the repetitions allow us to give a better probability bound. So what we really want to estimate is or bound is the probability that we are that the estimator is differs from the true count by twice the expected deviation for each each of them so this happens since we take the minimum if and only if we have such a large deviation for all i from 1 to d now these are independent because we have independent hash functions so this probability is simply the product of all the probabilities that we have a large deviation in each. And we just argued from Markov that each of these probabilities is at most one half. So we have one half to the power d, or two to the minus d. Now, if you want a particular error probability delta, we simply choose d to be the base two logarithm of one over delta. And then we succeed with probability one minus delta. It's instructed to compare the properties of count min and misrequeased.
the space usage for count min is d times t counters and Mr. Grease it's k but it's k pairs so the unit is, is different. The error bound for count min is twice the L1 norm divided by t and for Mr. Grease it's the L1 norm divided by k plus 1. Count mean has an error probability of 2 to the minus d, whereas Mr. Kreis is deterministic and doesn't have an error probability. Or, if you like, it's zero. But count mean has an advantage. It allows subtraction, so you can basically eliminate the effect of an insertion. This is because it's a so-called linear sketch. Mr. Kreis does support some kind of deletions but the data structure deteriorates with the number of subtractions. So it's not a good data structure if we're, you're going to have a lot of uh, subtractions. Finally, let's discuss how to create an unbiased estimator based on count min. The version we discussed is always going to underestimate the true counts. The idea is to subtract the expected noise from the, each of the estimators. What we can observe is that the expected noise is the same as the expected value of any other entry in the count sketch. So any, any cij where j is different from the hash value of x. So that is, we can look at the, the estimator that takes ci hi of x and subtracts some other entry in the, in the sketch from this. And the expectation of that is going to be exactly the true weight of x. Now we can... Um, combine several of these, not with minimum, because it's not no longer the case that we um, have positive noise, but we can use the median. So it's possible to show that with high probability, again exponentially small in d, uh, error probability, we, the median is going to be close to the, to the expectation with high probability. A particular implementation of this idea is a so-called so count sketch, which is described in the book, but is not part of the curriculum for this course.